Um, so here we are uh, for the talk this morning for the Eight Letters Lit Fest. And I'm Mitchell Legao. So I'll be talking about how to have a sustainable writing career. Okay. Sige. Uh, hi, Asin. Can you share the slides? Yeah. So everyone say hi to Hyacinth. Uh, she is from Eight Letters and she will be assisting me today. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so next slide, please. So, yun. so just very quickly, uh, introduce ko lang yung sarili ko. Di ako nagpa-flex, guys. Uh, gusto ko lang i-lay out to para at least alam nyo na alam ko yung pinag-uusapan ko, di ba? Sabihin nyo, ano bang pinagsasabi ng babaeng to? So, anyway, um, I am, again, Mitchell Lagao, I'm a hybrid author. So, for those who are not familiar with the term, hybrid author is uh, someone who has published traditionally and independently. So, my first uh, two books, uh, my poetry collection and my chapbook, I published by myself, self-published siya. And then my third book, uh, Black, and also my latest book uh, were published via eight letters. And then my children's book was published uh, sa OMF Literature, which is a traditional publisher. Yeah. So, halo. Um, it's good because at least I get to see how both sides work. Uh, I'm also a freelance editor and writer, and I also teach. I also mentor young people uh, for writing. And I'm also co-founder of Mojo Creatives Manila, which is a creative collective. I founded it with uh, two of my friends. And so we are creatives in different industries. But anyway, moving on. So yeah, next slide, please. Yeah. So just, I won't go through all of that, but very quickly, these are the other jobs that I've had. Uh, and if you notice, the main theme or the main, like, I don't know, thing that ties them together is that they're all in some capacity writing related or really uh, about writing. So yeah, so uh, I've been working full time since, ay, pamalaman yung edit ko. Hindi, okay lang naman. Um, been working full time since around 2006. Uh, and I can say that all of my jobs are really like that. Within that stream, there always has to be some writing or editing that's involved in it. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Yeah. So, ano bang pag-uusapan natin today? Okay, so this is what we are going to talk about. Uh, if you looked at the poster, ayan siya. Sorry if I'm talking too fast. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, also, good morning pala sa mga lahat ng nanonood. Maraming salamat. Thank you for being here uh, on a lazy Sunday morning. Uh, I hope that you'll find this very informative. And feel free to leave any comments uh, or questions. I can see the comments, so I will try to address them later on. Uh, don't worry, we'll have around 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A time, uh, depending on how many questions there are and, you know, if you have any clarifications. But there, these are the four things that we're going to look at. Um, I won't talk too much about building your brand because I know Chris had a really good talk yesterday about this. So I'm just going to touch upon it briefly. And hindi rin talaga yun ang aking uh, expertise. I'm really just still learning. Actually, I'm one of Chris's mentees when it comes to um, author brand building. So, yun. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so the first thing uh, that you need to do as a writer or as someone who wants to get into a, a writing career is really establish a writing routine. Uh, because this is something that you will want to do not just creatively, but to monetize, really. Um, and so what I what I always do say is, uh, don't work harder, work smarter. Um, it's not original to me. I know, you know, it's something that's been said uh, many times. Um, para madaling tandaan, ginawa ko siyang acronym. Yan, work smarter. So those are the things. If you see the slide on the right. Um, and so the first thing, though, before we get to that abbreviation, is something that you'll need to establish within yourself uh, to have a consistent and sustainable writing routine. And two things you need to take into account are, one, your availability 
kailan ka ba most available within a day, within the week? Uh, sa umaga, in the morning? Are you more available in the afternoon, uh, in the evenings, when the kids are asleep, like me? Um, and then your energy. Are you a night owl? Are you a morning person? Where are you, like, energy-wise, within the day or within the week? So you need to know those things so that you can hit that sweet spot, okay, between the balance between your availability and your energy. And then you go to the abbreviations, okay? So once you have that, uh, what, is it sustainable? So let's say that your sweet spot for availability and energy is um, 2 to 4 p.m. For example, lang, 2 to 4 p.m. Um, MWF. So is it sustainable? Can you write and do your writing-related tasks within that time frame consistently, sustainably, na hindi ka burn out, hindi ka mabobore, hindi ka mapapagod? Testing mo. So yun. You have to see if it's sustainable for you. Um, second, is it measurable? Like, can you actually see benefits? Can you see your output? Like, okay, when I am carving out that time within the week, uh, nakapag dalawang chapters ako sa libro ko, sabihin natin, or naka two pages up. So, na may measure mo versus like if I do it some other day or some other time, mas konti yung susulat ko, I, I can only write this much or I can only do this much. So, at, at least you're able to measure that. <clears throat> and then, of course, is it achievable? Right? Is it something that you can see yourself doing every week? Um, and then, are you able to, like, you know, come up with something like that? Like, yeah, achieve. I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Achievable. <laughs> resourced. Okay, when I say resourced, I mean, do you have the resources that you need in order to sustain this writing routine and to make sure that you achieve what you need to do? Um, are you, like, let's say, do you have a place that you can write in? Uh, doesn't necessarily mean, like, uh, one specific place all the time. Some people like to move around. Are you able to do that? Uh, do you have the tools you need to write? May mga tao na sa laptop sila, sa tablet. Um, I know some people actually finish writing uh, uh, on their phones, on their smartphones, you know. I've done that. I've written some poems on my smartphone and then I just transfer it later on. Uh, or are you the paper and pen type of person? So like that. And not just um, physical resources, but even like your mental, emotional resources. Do you have a supportive community? More on that later. Um, do you have at least one person who, you know, is helping you out, like in terms of like just encouraging you or any of those things. I mean, resources can come in different um, materials, diba? In different ways. And then T, timely. <clears throat> is it timely? So when you're establishing your writing routine, sakto ba yun? Kasi minsan seasonal eh. Minsan seasonal siya. So for example, if you are, let's say, taking care of an infant, uh, I'm saying this because I'm a mother, um, really the first... I would say the first five years of having a child, um, don't expect that you're going to have the same output as a writer that you did before your your child was born. Um, don't put that pressure on yourself. Um, maybe there are some who are able to write more. Um, I was able to write more in the wee hours when I was uh, taking care of my son. Um, minsan nag uh, nagpapadede ako, I would be breastfeeding or I'd be holding him and then I would write a bit, read a bit. Um, but with my daughter, I wasn't really able to do that. So it's different then, different per kid. So, you know, uh, there can be seasons wherein you establish this writing routine and you think it's perfect, but then something happens like a, a, a life situation. Uh, I know the pandemic happened and a lot of people's routines were really, really messed up. And they changed. They had to change with the times. So make sure that your writing routine is uh, timely. It's flexible. You know, you you have to adapt as a writer. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it's ethical. Okay, what do I mean when I say it's ethical? Uh, meaning, uh, you know, you, hindi naman, you, 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 you're fair to yourself. 
and you're fair to others. So like, again, I, I use the example of a mom, but I mean, this can apply to anyone in any life situation if you have a loved one or people you're taking care of or responsibilities that you have. And a lot of the time, this is also um, the reason why, you know, people don't get encouraged so much as writers feeling nila, ang tamad-tamad mo, nandiyan ka sa harap ng computer mo, hindi mo. Um, so try to be, <laughs> as much as possible, try to be ethical. Um, don't forget to wash your dishes, uh, things like that. If you have certain responsibilities um, that only you can do, uh, try to, to do that as well. Um, this is something that a lot of writers struggle with. Uh, I know that there are stories of... Um, I'm trying to think of one in uh, particular. I suppose um, A.A. Milne, yun, uh, the creator of Winnie the Pooh. So great writer, created Winnie the Pooh. Um, not a very great father, apparently. So according to the real Christopher Robin, he wasn't much of a dad, I suppose. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, you know, what legacy do you want? I mean, you know, is the cost of being such a, a great writer or pursuing this writing career going to be hurtful to generations? Um, think about it. That what you want to leave behind. So, you know, try to consider that. I know not a lot of uh, talks maybe add that when talking about a writing routine. I think it's important though uh, for us to consider. Uh, and then of course, last, balik tayo sa medyo mas uh, practical and uh, something you can like see results based so are you getting the results that you are aiming for if not uh then balik ka sa chart is it because yung energy mo lacking or yung availability mo what is it uh adjust adjust uh really finding your own flow or writing routine will take a lot of adjustments and alignments because we're all different we all write differently we have different lives and it feeds into our writing. Okay, uh, next slide, please. There. So these are the four things. I'm just gonna go through very briefly. When you're trying to find your voice as a writer, especially when you're writing out, yeah. So there, the first thing, uh, very importantly, ah, okay, okay, go back, I said. Next slide, yeah. Uh, the one thing I tell a lot of um, writers who are young and want to write is, um, mabuhay kayo, <laughs> mabuhay. Na, I mean, live. Uh, I like this quote from uh, Thoreau. It's how vain it is to sit down to write when you have not stood up to live. So a lot of our lives, of course, as you know, inform the way we write. Um, I'm not saying that you have to go out on some great adventure and travel the world. I mean, if you want to and you have the capacity and resources to go for it. Um, but I'm just saying that you have to make sure that you examine your life if you want to be a writer for the long haul. Okay? Uh, Tignan mo na maigi yung buhay mo. Be thoughtful. Be observant. Appreciate your life. There are people who... Even if they, you know, they don't write real life things, uh, they write fantasy, they, fi they write sci-fi, that's fine. But they have a very keen and observant eye. So, for example, um, if yesterday you were listening to the talk about sci-fi and fantasy, uh, I found it very interesting that the people who write sci-fi and fantasy have a very deep knowledge of history, of psychology, of various subjects. So, hindi lang yun yun tinitignan nila. They really look at the breadth and depth of life because that's what you need when you are writing things that are fantastical, uh, when you write things that are looking to the future. Diba? You also have to consider the past and the present. And so, if you want to have that writer's life, just live. Talk to people. Uh, if you're an introvert, read a lot of books. Go on a lot of walks. Observe. What did you observe today, this morning? What was the first thing you did this morning when you woke up? Diba? What, I mean, you know, I'm not, they don't have to tell me, but just think about it. Think about 
how you can be more um, present in your own life. Yeah. Next, next slide, please. Yeah, read intentionally. I know a lot of people say, read, 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 read. Yes, I agree with them. Uh, I know some writers say, read everything and anything. Read trash, read the classics, read everything. Um, when I was younger and I had the time to do that, I did. But now, now because um, I'm working, I, I have kids, I'm currently homeschooling, uh, di ko na kaya guys, you know, read everything. So I have to be more intentional. Sometimes I don't finish a book. When I was younger, that was like, oh, how dare you not finish a book? But now it's stage na yun, guys. Tanda na ako. So I really have to um, be careful with my time, right? And so, yeah, if you want to read and continue reading, go for it. Uh, I suggest that, you know, if you don't have, like, you know, all the time in the world, then read intentionally. Here are some of the books that have helped me personally as a writer. So this is a mix of books about writing, about the writing process, and also books about poetry, um, particular poetry. Um, all of these are like, I think, readily available naman. You can look for them uh, on Amazon or in kung wala sila sa mga local bookstore. Uh, except, for, except for A Passionate Patient. I'm not sure if you can get that. But that's such a good book. It's actually um, writings from different Filipino poets. And they like look at a particular poem that they wrote. And then they talk about the process. How they wrote it. How they revised. Super useful siya sa akin because it showed me na, ah, okay, so that's how um, other writers, you know, uh, approach their poetry. So, Maganda siya. Yes, I see someone in the comments. Artist's Way is super helpful to me. Um, the idea of really just morning pages uh, and artist dates. Uh, that was uh, such a huge like boost in, in my writing as well. Uh, but I mean, I won't go through all of the books because uh, it's time time. But try to look for them. Look at like, reviews. Try to get copies if you can. Um, if you can't get the physical copies, digital copies. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah. Get to know yourself or yourselves. Um, I believe in the multiplicity of, of ourselves. Um, and regardless of the faith system or belief system or religion that you have, I think in some sense, ev everything or every philosophy has that idea i mean if you're a catholic um, a christian diba? you know people are seen as like having three parts the body the soul and the spirit um in certain indigenous uh beliefs they they believe that you know uh, we have more than one soul we have seven souls we have nine souls so you know that is different aspects of yourself so when you're looking for your voice uh Look at the different selves that you have within you. So, for example, me, uh, or, or any of us really, like uh, a part of me is a parent, a part of me is a daughter, a sister, a wife. Uh, those are my, you know, but another part of me is a writer, an editor. Uh, there's a part of me that has a lot of anger. And so um, part of me that has a lot of sadness so you look at all those parts of yourself they're all you um and usually what a lot of people try to do is the negative parts they try to you know just dismiss that look for the positive things no it th that's gonna make you a very imbalanced person um sit with those parts of yourself and get to know it because that's where your writing is gonna come from eh? That's how you know what you want to say. You, you have to listen to yourself and you have to listen to the different parts of you. So it's a bit to get your head around, but I think those who have studied some form of psychology or who are like, you know, have to put on different hats um, regularly, medyo nagigets niyo ito. So yeah, kasama yan sa writing natin. That's how you find your unique voice that combination of, of parts that you have. 
Okay, next slide, please. And, and also that goes with your branding, di ba? Like your archetype. Um, again, mas maganda if uh, ma mapanood nyo or ma pakinggan nyo yun. Um, yung talk ni Chris about that. Okay. Um, be part of a community. Yun. So, again, you have that aspect of yourself where you're listening to yourself, but you can't stay there. Because then you just be you, you, you. Uh, you also have to be part of a greater writing community. So, I just put here some pictures of some of the writing communities that I've been with um, recently and also in the past. So, uh, my advice would be uh, join different groups, join workshops, join different writing communities online or in person. It's great to be in communion with other writers as well, um, people who really care about writing and who are going through the same issues and challenges that you are. So there's a solidarity and comfort in that. So again, like here eight, at Eight Letters, there's also a group. Uh, it's an online group, and I think, you know, once in a while, like, we meet ups, and that's great. So please try to join those as well, uh, if you can. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah. So ito na yun. <laughs> I think ito yung dahilan kung bakit kayo nandito na yung umagla. So, so here we are. Mitch, how do I actually earn money? How do I, when I say sustainable, I mean, how will it feed me? So ito yun. Okay, um, I'll try to give as practical advice as possible, okay? So the first one is to find your niche, okay? Um, to get, next slide, please. Antayin lang natin ang next slide. Meanwhile, I'm gonna look at the comments. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. Sige. So, next slide, please. Ay, ayan na. Okay. Yun. So, there. So, if you saw those three points, um, I wanted to present them lang in this way kasi hindi siya actually linear. You do these things dapat sabay-sabay. So you look for your niche, you promote, you submit, and then you build your IP. Hopefully, more or less together uh, in order to fully maximize or to be more efficient. So sige, first one is building, uh, finding your niche. Sige, next slide, please. Okay, so this is how you find it. So, ito yung mga tatanungin niyo, okay? So, ask yourselves, what do you like writing? What is it? Do you like uh, writing? And not just genre-wise, but even topic-wise. Uh, again, I use myself as an example uh, because, because I know myself. Uh, but uh, when other writers come to mind, I will mention them as well. So, for example, I like writing poetry. Uh, and creative nonfiction, but at the same time, I like writing about mental health. I like writing about trauma, memory, and so okay. So that's one. Later, I'll show you how this works, uh, like in a very complicated-looking chart, but not really. Um, second, what are the things related to writing that you can do or learn? And again, this is good uh, to make your writing career sustainable. When the pandemic hit. Um, so we were under lockdown for quite some time and um 2021 was a really bad year for me uh it was a year of writer's block before that i never really experienced writer's block uh saya ko, diba? um but 2021 i did it was very very difficult to write and so i had to work um at the time right i mean you know we need to eat. <laughs> and what I did was I, I taught. I was teaching. I was teaching online classes related to writing. Um, and I was editing. So at least I was still able to write. And that's one thing to make uh, your writing career sustainable. You need to take that into account. What if there are times when it's really a struggle to write? 
So it's good to have a backup, a backup skill or a backup um, work of some sort that will help sustain you so that, you know, once you can write again, then you'll be okay. So, so that was for me, editing. Uh, some people who are more visual, uh, actually, they can do layout, which is great. They can lay out their own books, they can do their own book covers, and they can do that for other people as well. Again, it's not writing exactly, but it's writing related. And so it really does fall under your writing career. Um, so yeah, and then just connected to that, which of the above are you interested in? So I really like editing. Uh, I quite like editing. Sometimes I like editing more than writing itself. So that works out for me. And again, what are your strengths? So that's how you find your niche. Just write all of those things down, see where it goes, uh, and explore. Next slide, please. Yeah. So ito yun sinasabi ko na parang meron siyang chart thing. Uh, so there, what I was talking about really just, so there's the poetry, there's the CNF. Uh, CNF means creative nonfiction. And then all the things that sort of flow together for me to find my niche, which is really advocacy writing, uh, writing for advocacies, and creative writing. Next slide, please. Yeah. And then, meanwhile, so, sige, alam mo na yung niche mo, diba? Okay, this is what you write. This is what I am doing. Um, promote yourself. Promote, submit, revise, repeat. Again, go back to the start. Promote, submit, revise, repeat. So, you need to keep doing this. Um, I struggled quite a bit with this uh, in terms of promotion. I only... Uh, opened the Facebook author page a uh, few months ago, I think. Yeah, uh, it was late last year or early this year. Late last year. Um, and, but I've been writing uh, since, gosh. Well, I've been writing professionally since 2008. And I've been like, but my first collection came out 2016. So it's kind of late because um, it's a bit, a bit of a struggle. I'm still learning as well. So the stuff I'm sharing with you all is things that I have learned. So yeah, so promote on your social media. Uh, promote among your family and friends. They're your community. When people ask, who do you write for? Um, me, uh, my answer would be, I write for my community. I write for the people who, who you know, would really be, um, I suppose, impacted by the things I write. Um, a lot being uh, my family, friends, like-minded people. So promote amongst them. Um, they, you know, a lot of good happens when you spread things word of mouth, about very grassroots, word of mouth, community-based. I like those things. Um, your alumni groups or your orgs, um, your schools, your, your where you've been, your high school, your college, um, interest groups, again, like-minded people. And also continue to submit to contests and to places where you can be published. Um, this goes for people who are writing creatively or writing professionally as well. Uh, I can see there's a there. Um, hi, RC. Thanks for your comment. Yes. So you are a professional writer. Um, well, I mean, you know, when you say professional writer, you can also be a creative professional writer. Um, I think Creativity is not just the purview of those who write poetry or fiction. Uh, you can be a creative anything. I mean, you know, we're all in some capacity creative, I think. So go down. Yes. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, you're looking to get published. Uh, I love that you just put that out there in the comment section. Um, you know, power in words and all of that. So just go for it. Um, all the best to you. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, submissions. Uh, here are some of the places where uh, I've submitted to or I've checked out that have been quite helpful for me. So go to Submittable. If you don't have a Submittable account, it's free. You can just sign in with your, uh, I mean, sorry, sign up with your email. Um, check it out. In discover function, you just look. There are tags and you'll see a lot of international contests and journals and literary magazines to submit to. 
uh, writejobs.info. They also have a Facebook page. They have a lot of different submissions. They just post, post every day, daming post dun. Uh, check out local contests uh, and local publications. I know that the Philippine Graphic Reader, Philippines Graphic? Philippine. Philippines Graphic Reader um, has an open call uh, so of submission because they publish like regularly. Um, sa eight letters, of course, there's the eight circles. Uh, check out panitikan.ph. Uh, they also have a lot of different posts related to contests and submissions. And of course, the different publisher groups and pages. So recently, of course, we know eight letters had the 31 letters challenge. Uh, there was also the call for submission to the anthology for the uh, Lunar New Year. So, marami yan. And then, just keep submitting. Um, masakit ma-reject, but you know what? It's okay. Ganun man talaga buhay, di ba? Sometimes, it's not you or your work. Sometimes, you were just submitting to the wrong venue. So, that's why you have to keep submitting until you find uh, the right one. And make sure you read. <laughs> you read like, mamaya, you're submitting a love poem. And then, yung pala, the place that you submitted to only publishes political poems, you know, things like that. So you have to also make sure that what you're writing matches, diba? It's just, you know, finding really a good fit. Next, please. Yeah, so build your IP. Okay, what does IP mean? IP means intellectual property. Okay, in this in, in this slide, that's what it means. It can mean different things. Eh? So let's say you are now a writer. And you have written your book. Um, that's not where it ends. Uh, if you want to have a sustainable writing career, okay. Once you have a book, that's just one part of it. Um, of course, there's that part where you have to keep promoting the book so that people will buy it. But you can go in so many directions. For example, um, let's say you want to reach people who you know would benefit from your book, would enjoy it, but don't have the time to read, to actually sit down and read. Uh, make an audiobook version. And let's say you don't have the budget to hire um, someone to read it. Eh, ikaw na magbasa. Kung maganda naman bosses mo, go lang, di ba? Um, create an audiobook version. Or ask eight letters. I believe that eight letters has like different you know, ways to help you actually build your IP. That's what's nice about ha being, you know, connected to a publisher. Um, they can actually help you, with, you know, in, in brainstorming and thinking about things to do with your IP. So let's say you want to do a podcast. Pwede rin naman. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, let's say, create a comic version. So this is actually, I've seen this. It's quite interesting with uh, children's books. Yung mga middle grade children's books, uh, there are some that start out as just um, text and then they have a comic version of it. Uh, again, if you if you were just thinking of having a physical version, um, you can have a digital version. Yeah, Webtoon. If you are in touch with different artists and illustrators, you can actually do a Webtoon version of one of your stories. And so you reach different markets. So again, it, you know, it doesn't like the the book itself, the publishing of your book is not the be all and end all of your writing career, right? You can continue to promote it. And I mean, six years later, you can still continue to, to do things with it and to, to earn money from it, right? Because that's that's the way that it, it actually goes. It's already out there in the world. Um, so may as well try to see how else uh, you can present it, the different iterations of your ideas that are out there. So yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, speaking of webtoons, I love webtoons. Um, did you know, para sa mga K-drama fans out there, a lot of the K-dramas that we've been watching are from webtoons, actually. Um, off the top of my head, I'm thinking... Um, Taxi Driver, Uncanny Counter, uh, um, I think True Beauty is also from a webtoon. Dami, dami talaga. Uh, so, ang galing, di ba? Kasi it really translates to a lot. I mean, you know, when writers write their books, sometimes they only think 
um, that's it. I'm done. Uh, or there are some who are, you know, um, uh, more ambitious and they think, I'm thinking series. I'm thinking um, movie. That's great. Go for it. Uh, but there are other ways as well, as you can see here. Um, another interesting thing, I think, is like, um, uh, I forgot which Mahoto uh, Shinkai movie it was, maybe Weathering With You. I'm not sure. But anyway, one of those uh, na mentioned sa akin ng isang kaibigan. So one of my friends mentioned that they actually built in Japan a walking tour um, based on one of those movies. So you get to walk around the different um, areas seen in that movie. Ang galing, di ba? So for those who are actually um, writing books or stories based in the Philippines, um, wherever you are, whether you're in Metro Manila or different areas, Iloilo, wherever, you can actually think about doing a, uh, a walking tour for your story. So isn't that cool? So that, you know, you, you can bring your group. Oh, this is where in this particular scene, you know, in chapter 5, page uh, 28, dito nangyari yung laban. So this is where, you know, so, I mean, that that would be super cool. And then more people would, you know, would be interested in actually um, reading your book or going on your walking tour. I don't know. It just sounds cool to me. Uh, I wish I could do that. Okay. So next, next slide. Actually, patapos na tayo. Yeah. So I really just rushed through this. Um, sorry if I, I talk too fast. Oh, thank you for people who are super nice saying I'm a natural speaker. Alam nyo ba, nakaka... Sinasabi ng mga students ko, medyo nakakaantok yung bosses ko. I feel like sometimes they kind of fall asleep. So, magano, magano na ba ako, guys? Yung ASMR. <laughs> para, para makatulog yung mga tao. Anyway, umaga. So, please don't sleep. Uh, but yeah, you can connect with me. You can add me... Uh, you can add my page. It's Michelle on Stars. You can add me on IG. Um, and then my creative collective with my friends. We're also on Facebook. We just started last month. Okay, konti pa lang followers namin. Yeah, that's Mojo Creatives and then and LinkedIn. So, yeah. Um, for those who are trying to add me on Facebook, like my personal account, um, I'm sorry if, like, I haven't added people. One is that I'm, because I have kids and I sometimes post about details about my children, I'm very, um, very protective of that and so if like i haven't met you in real life yet i'm a bit hesitant to add so it's not about you it's about me and because i i'm also a child rights advocate and so i'm you know i'm very conscious uh, of their privacy because now shempre my, my children are small they don't really realize it but then maybe later on you know they wouldn't be com comfortable and so i try to keep my friends uh like in my friends list uh, uh, minimum, minimum siya. So, yun. So, I have, like, a personal account and then I have my, my page, my public account. So, yun. Yun lang. Yun, baka kasi sabihin niyo, suplada tong si Mitch, hindi siya, ano, last week ko pa akong nag-friend with request. Di man lang niya ako in so, so, just like that. <clears throat> but usually, if I've met you already uh, in real life or or even online and we've talked a lot and medyo, yun, um, I can be like, okay, yun lang. Just, just wanted to say that. Sige. So, okay, we have 20 minutes uh, as promised for questions. So, uh, yeah. Any questions? Anything that you want to ask when it comes to having a sustainable writing career? Titingin na ako dito sa comments niya. Sige, inom muna ako. Guys. <coughs> Okay. Ah, what are your thoughts? Okay. So, Odessa, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Odessa asks, what are your thoughts on going full-time with writing? Um, I'm, I think that it's, uh, you know, if it's something that you are passionate about and that you feel that you can do on long run, go for it. Um, this, I mean, that's, essentially what I'm doing right now. I'm a freelance uh, writer, editor. So technically, I'm, I'm a full-time writer. Um, but I don't just write creatively, like poetry or books. I do other types of writing as well. Um, I write uh, inspirational 
works. I write for devotionals. And I also do a bit of like lifestyle writing, advocacy writing, writing for organizations. So pwede naman siya. Because there are different types of writers. I think um, professional writers have, di kaya importante to find your niche. Because uh, once you find your niche, then go, you can do that. You can go for that. I mean, it's, it's doable. It's possible. Okay. Uh, Prince is asking, okay, in a nation where reading culture is fading and where artists such as writers are easily disregarded and experience a lack of recognition, how can a writer achieve a sustainable writing career? Okay, in terms of society's appreciation of governmental support and governmental support. Um, you know, I think that's... Um, I think that's a struggle of, of any artist right now in our country and in other countries, uh, the lack of support and recognition. And I think one thing that you need to really ask yourself is, why am I writing? Why? Is it for the recognition? Um, is it for the acceptance? Uh, if that's the case, then maybe maybe you'll need to think a bit more about whether or not because in the long run, if you you know if you can that's hindi siya sustainable. Kasi di ba yun ang ano natin sustainable writing career. Um, because kahit sino naman nakita naman natin di ba ang bilis makancel na mga kahit artista ka na super sikat ka after a while you know people turn their backs on you sometimes you know it, it's really a love hate relationship with with your fans um, so um, for me personally I think that that if looking for recognition or fame is the thing that that you are pursuing it's not sustainable. There has to be something more. I mean, it's nice. It's nice when people recognize you, but um, there has to be something more to why you are writing in order for it to be sustainable. Um, lack of support, that one super gets ko talaga yun. Kasi, like, kahit yung mga athletes natin na Olympic level, nahihirapan sila to get government support. Um, and which is why, like I mentioned kanina, it's really tap into your community. Um Sometimes it's your community that actually will help pitch in and support. Uh, hindi po patay ang bayanihan. <laughs> Nabubuhay pa siya. Um, surprisingly, in our climate, uh, I recently attended an online writer's retreat and I was able to get a scholarship for that, but uh, it was a partial scholarship. It wasn't a full scholarship. There was still an amount I needed to pay, which, to be honest, I could not afford. Uh, and so I, I actually emailed... Uh, and sent out letters to some people in my community. Uh, and I asked them, and sometimes, ang hira para sa atin, di ba? Kasi it's like you're thinking, oh my gosh, um, you have to ask for money from other people. Um, well, you know what? Think of it this way. Um, they're investing in you and in your writing because they believe in you. Uh, and if they don't want to, that's okay. But if they do, uh, then yay, di ba? Because, you know, they're, they're your community. And, you know, um, sa awa ng Diyos, um, umabot naman. So, the people who I know within my community pitched in to help. Some people who I was very surprised, I just asked them, like, hey, can you, like, just pray for me? But they actually, you know, they said, hey, you know what? Uh, I'll do you one better. I'll actually give some. And then, yeah, nabuo yun. Yun ko lang dun sa fee for that. And I was able to, to join that writer's retreat, which was... Uh, quite nice. It was very, very educational. So, yeah. So, try to do that. And also, look for international. Um, now that it's, you know, a, a very global world, again, check out online. Look for there are grants. Um, one of those that I can recall is the Sustainable Arts Foundation. You can, you can Google it, guys. Sustainable Arts Foundation. And they give international grants to any writers who are parents. So if you're a parent, if you have a child below 18 years old um, and you're an artist in some capacity, a writer, a musician, a visual artist, you can apply for the grant. So, so may mga ganun uh, that you can uh, check out as well. Next question. What's more sustainable? Writing for local publishers or writing for international publishers? If it's the latter, then how can local publishers improve to be up to par with 
overseas publishers, what do we need to innovate? Oh, gosh, uh, that is a very big question. I mean, I'm glad it, it's being asked. Um, I don't know if I can answer it uh, during this session. Um, I can give you just my personal opinion. Um, for me, it has to be both. Um, you have to, like, if you're writing, go for both local and international. Um, the beauty of writing in this day and age is that we don't have to choose really um, either or. Even if you're not writing in English, if you're writing in um, Filipino or uh, a, a, another regional language, um, may translation na yun. And sometimes international publishers like that more. They, they do want um, to translate works into, you know, uh, their other European American languages. So I think it's just, if you're in terms of sustainability, go for both, right? Um, see which one works better for you. And local, you know, local publishers now are really, um, honestly, the pandemic was such a big hit to local publishers. Um, I'm speaking like when I talk to my friends in the publishing industry, um, medyo nahirapan talaga sila. Kasi like, for example, example na lang, um, the paper, the stocks of paper, kasi we, we import, we import the paper um, because of the pandemic, ang hirap. And then also people were not going to bookstores. A lot of branches had to close, diba? Um, but I think digital sales went up. So there's that. Um, so I think that the pandemic has actually pushed local publishers to already innovate a lot. Like compared to when I was in traditional publishing, I worked in a traditional publishing house in 2017. Com then compared to now, a lot has changed in that short span of time uh, due to the pandemic. Um, and I think that, you know, if you look at pages like uh, the NCCA, like, you know, the National Culture and Commission of the Arts, the Philippine Book Development Association, you'll see that they're very active and they have like, you know, been innovating a lot, joining a lot of the world book fairs and all of that. So I'm not sure if I was able to answer that, but yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I can like cover all of it. Okay, but hopefully that uh, helped a bit. Okay, from Tiffany, you said that you like writing about mental health. Yes. What are your thoughts on representation for people with ADHD, bipolar, autism, etc. in books? Will you write about them too? Thank you, Paul. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it is great to have more representation. I recently read a book. Uh, it's called Half a Soul. I forgot who the author is. Um, but it's called Half a Soul. Uh, and it was a romance novel. And it was interesting because the heroine, habang binabasa ko siya, it seemed to be she's coded as, uh, it wasn't said outright, right? So coded siya. But it seemed to be na neurodiverse siya because she was unlike, you know, the usual, the, I guess what we have in our heads as a, the usual heroine in a romance novel. And I really liked that. I think that was really nice. Again, K-dramas, if you've seen Extraordinary Attorney Wu, she's neurodiverse. Uh, that's great. I think we need to have more representation for sure um, in our local um, in our local media and materials. Um, and not just like, you know, like representation for like just parang uh, icing lang, parang window dressing. But really, you know, um, make it a part of the of the media of the story itself um in a very authentic way um i really hope more would i write about them too um i would well i try uh, my children's book the sad cat is actually a, a, a picture book which has like some strategy strategies to help younger children deal with sadness so so that's like, you know, like because even little kids get really sad, right? And then, you know, na minsan, sinasabi na lang natin sa, kamalungkot, 
huwag ka umiyak. <laughs> Sino dito na sabihan ng gano'n ng bata? Oo, oh, oh, huwag ka na umiyak, huwag ka na umiyak. Um, doesn't really help them later on in life as adults to to deal with sadness, you know. So, yeah, so that uh, that was uh, something I wrote about. And hopefully I can write a bit more about that uh, as well. So, yes. Yun. And also, thank you. Thank you. What are your words of encouragement for beginner writers who want to pursue writing? Um, wow, words of encouragement. Um, go for it. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Yun eh. Eh, pat tumawa ako, parang joke time. Hindi, hindi joke yun. Totoo yun. Go for it. Do it. And I believe in you. So, yes. Yan. Ah. Ah, okay. Someone posted the link for sustain. Yeah, thank you for posting that. Yeah. So, yung mga parent writers, go for it. Check check it out. Yan. Do you ever get burned out? Yes. Yeah, yun. Yung 2021. Um, so, parang, I started writing professionally. Uh, when I say professionally, it means I started getting paid for for my writing around 2008. Um, and tuloy-tuloy yun. And so, you know, I was like, ah, writer's block. Yeah, you know, kasi I was able to write until 2021. And then 2021, it's just like, di talaga ako, like, I would, I would try to write. I tried to write, but I just end up writing the same thing again and again. Or it would just be blank, and I couldn't find the words. So yeah, it, it did happen. Again, um, what helped me during that year was I could still edit, um, and I could teach, I could talk about writing, and slowly it helped me get back into my own writing. Um, so yeah, so that's why I, I was suggesting a while ago, try to look at other writing-related things, explore editing, if you if you haven't yet, uh, or layout, doing layout, doing book covers, um, it's another creative aspect of the publishing industry that I think is is very fascinating. So yes, yeah, uh, I think we have around six minutes. If ever anyone has any other questions, I hope that I was able to address your your, your questions. Um, satisfactorily. <laughs> Sana naman. And of course, uh, you know, there are uh, other talks today. I hope that you're free and you can check out the, I think there is a travel writing talk later, if I'm not mistaken. I will also try to actually listen to that. Sounds interesting. Uh, I've been going to the talks as well. Nakakatawa. Uh, what are your tips for writers when they are burned out from writing? Ah, well, the first thing I would ask is, what do you think led to this burnout? Um, because the burnout is really the symptom of a, you know, of a, of a larger issue, the right? uh, Ask yourself that, is it because you're just so tired, like physically, na hindi ka na nakakapagpahinga? Um, or are you tired emotionally? Um like in my case, in, in 2021, aside from the pandemic happening, um, the latter part of 2019 and 2020 was very difficult for me. And uh, it was like everything just caught up. Na parang, you know, how it is with trauma sometimes, um, when the thing is happening, you have to power through it. And then when it's over and you're in a safe place, that's when suddenly it just hits you and well, it's like your body starts to process it and then that's when you start to break down and then you struggle. So, yeah. So first, uh, I'll, I'll need to know and you'll need to know what led to this burnout. Mm -hmm. Sustainability for me is all about luck and timing. But, if, yeah, there is an element, I think, um, of luck there. Um, but see, when, when you talk about luck, uh, I'm curious to know what what you view luck as. Like, it, what what is luck? Is it favor from the gods uh, for you, or luck is it just uh, a random toss of the universe's dice? I mean, you know, that it also depends. I think on on what you mean by that. Um, I mean, that's you know, 
we all have our 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 own definitions of sustainability. My definition well, for this talk, particularly, sustainability is something that you can do in the long run. Um, something that will help you to continue to feed yourself and, and your family, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, nakalagay lang dito Facebook user, so I can't see your name, but um, thank you for being here. Wow, you've been writing for 30 years. That's amazing. And that's sustainable. I mean, you know, the fact that you've you've been writing for 30 years. Um, yeah, saludo. Um, yes, yeah, you know, you know, actually, same. The selling and the promotion has always been a challenge for me as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, it's great. Like, that's why I think we also need to be humble. Like, you know, it's so amazing that you've been writing for 30 years, but you've really you know communicated with other experts in marketing and promotions um and so i think we have to do that i mean we can be like the most amazing best writer in the world but if no one knows it then how are we gonna get read um there was this there was a, a series of tweets from this poet i super admire he was the facilitator for a poetry workshop i went to see chen chen um and it was about self-promotion. I, sh I shared it on my page, actually. Um, so, it's a baby lang pasok. I shared it on my page. Follow me. Uh, oh, promotions, guys. Uh, but no, seriously, um, ang galing. Kasi he was saying na parang, you know, we really need to uh, promote. Uh, parang people were saying, you know, there's minsan yung feeling na parang, ah, ayoko mag-promote, ayoko mag-benta, nahiya ako, kakahiya naman, di ba? Um, but actually, when you think about it, Diba? Um, even those Hollywood movies with super kilalang actors, they still promote, you know, promote the hell out of the movie. The trailers are everywhere. The posters are everywhere. And then, you know, why? Why do they do that? I mean, when you think about it, the movie could pretty much sell itself because the actors who are in it are already super sikat. Um, and everyone likes, you know, watching movies and, you know, all of that. Um, but they still do it. So why should it be? Diba? Um, and I think it's, you know, a bit, it comes from, a, a, sorry to say, but it comes from a very presumptuous and yabang place to think na, oh, I'm so great. My work is so good that people, you know, are just bound to come across it and love it and share it. Um, doesn't really work that way. Sometimes, maybe, but not always. Um, it takes also a lot of humility to sell and promote and market, I think. Um, because, you know, you have to really put yourself out there. And some people are going to laugh at you or some people are going to find you kulit. Um, so, but then there's some people who are like, ooh, interesting. I think I'll take a look. So, you know, so give it a shot, definitely. That's um, that's my take on it, at least. Yeah. Yes, that is a beautiful way of looking at it. Now you're offering your gifts to the world. Yeah, it's like, hey, I made this, uh, and I'm offering it. it. It's a gift. Take it or leave it. But at least you know it's there. And there, that's the thing. I think that's para hindi tayo tignan na parang ang kulit kulit mo. It's like I'm not pushing you to buy this yet. I'm just informing you that it's here and then maybe you would like to buy it now so yeah so that's yeah exactly no guts no glory as willer said uh and yeah last comment uh from jenny hi jenny what can you say to other writers who look down on self-promotion that's also a challenge mm. i self-promote but not consistently since i'm on same same tayo same jenny um yeah, I, I think yun, if you look down on self-promotion, again, why? Um, are you for those who look down on self-promotion, my question to them is why? I mean, you come from a place of such great privilege that you don't need to promote yourself, that you have other people promoting for you. If you do, then that's great. Um, good for you. But not all of us have that capacity, especially when you look at the, you know, independent um writers, diba? Some are just really 
on their own. They're not connected to any publishing house. And sariling kayod talaga sila. Um, let's not look down on them. Let's not look down on people who have less capacity or less resources than we do. Uh, I think that's, you know, there, there's room for everyone uh, and, you know, the different voices that, that we have. And let's be kind. <laughs> let's practice some ki- kindness for our fellow writers. Yeah. And on that note, uh, I thank everyone for joining today. And I hope that you were able to get some practical views for the information that I've shared. And I hope that you have a nice rest of the day. And thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Hyacinth as well for her help. Hello. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who uh, took time out this morning. So bye, everyone.